everybody, this video introduces the properties of waves, specifically for transverse waves. In this video, we'll introduce quite a few common properties you'll come across with waves, including amplitude, wavelength, frequency and period, as well as the velocity of waves. These properties of longitudinal waves will be discussed separately in a different video. By way of review, transverse waves are ones where the oscillation direction, that is the direction in which the particles or the electric and magnetic fields are oscillating, when they are perpendicular to the direction of the wave's propagation. So for mechanical waves, the direction of particles oscillation will be perpendicular to the direction of travel of the wave itself. And for electromagnetic waves, the direction of oscillation of both the electric and magnetic fields are perpendicular to the direction of propagation of the wave. Amplitude refers to the maximum displacement of oscillation from the equilibrium position of the particle or of the field. Typically, when you're graphing a transverse wave on a displacement versus distance graph, the amplitude can be easily determined by finding the distance between the highest point and the equilibrium position from which the wave oscillates. In this case, this corresponds to three of the squares, which is three units of amplitude. This is a wave of a greater amplitude. You can see that it still is a transverse wave as it oscillates perpendicularly to the direction of its propagation. But now the maximum displacement of the oscillation is further away from the center it is said to have a higher amplitude of 5 units. Amplitude of waves affects its energy. Waves with higher amplitude carries more energy. So in this case, the black wave of a higher amplitude carries more energy compared to the blue wave with a lower amplitude. When discussing the concept of amplitude, it is important to also understand and know two important terms in transverse waves. The crest of a transverse wave refers to the maximum positive displacement of the wave, and this is represented by the purple dots of this diagram. In contrast, the trough of a transverse wave refers to the maximum negative displacement of the wave. So this is the bottom end of the transverse on the diagram. The amplitude of the transverse wave can be easily measured by finding the distance between the center or equilibrium position of the wave from the crest or the trough. The wavelength of a wave is defined as the distance over which the wave cycle repeats itself. If you look at any type of transverse wave, you'll recognize that it has a repeating pattern. It goes up to its highest displacement, which is a crest, comes back down to the center position, and then goes down to the most negative displacement, which is known as a trough, and then comes back to its initial position. And then the whole cycle repeats itself again. The distance over which one cycle of the wave travels is known as its wavelength. And this can be easily measured if the wave is plotted over an x-axis of distance. In this case, one cycle of a wave here spans over 5 meters, so the wavelength of this wave is 5 meters. Another easy way to measure the wavelength of a transverse wave is by measuring the distance between consecutive crests, which are the maximum points of the wave, or consecutive troughs of the wave, and these are both equal to 5 meters. In physics, wavelength is often represented by the Greek symbol lambda, and the SI unit for wavelength is the same as distance, which is meters. Here I have another wave in black, which demonstrates a wave of a longer wavelength. Now you can see it takes 10 meters for the wave to start a new cycle and also the distance between the consecutive crest of the second wave is also longer, which also equals to 10 meters. Frequency of a wave is defined as the rate of oscillation, more specifically, the number of wavelengths of the wave in a unit of time, most commonly in one second. So in simple words, how many wavelengths of the wave can pass through a point in a second? Unlike wavelength, Frequency can only be determined on the graph if the x-axis is of time, for example seconds, instead of distance. So here you can see that one cycle or one wavelength of this transverse wave completes itself in a span of one second. So the frequency of this wave is equal to 1 per second, which is also equal to 1 hertz. 
The symbol for frequency in physics is represented by lowercase f, and the SI unit for frequency is represented by the word hertz, which is also equivalent to per second. A frequency of 10 hertz or 10 per second means that 10 wavelengths of a wave can pass through a point every second. In this example, the blue wave completes one wavelength in a span of one second. This means the frequency of this particular wave is one hertz. What about for this black wave? Well, in one second, the black wave is unable to complete one wavelength. In fact, it only completes half of its wavelength, and it takes two seconds to complete one wavelength. So the frequency of this black wave is equal to 0.5 hertz. So only 0.5 or half of the wavelength passes through a point in every second. The period of a wave is defined as a time taken for one wavelength of the wave to pass by. It is represented by the symbol capital T, and its SI unit is the same as time in seconds. Like frequency, the period of the wave can only be determined on the graph if the x-axis is of time, for example in seconds. For the blue wave, one wavelength requires one second to complete, which means the period of this wave is exactly one second. For the black wave, you can see that one complete wavelength takes a duration of two seconds to complete. So this wave's period is equal to two seconds. It is important to understand and remember that period and frequency are inversely proportional. If you know the frequency, you can find the period by finding the reciprocal of the frequency. Vice versa, you can also find the frequency by taking the reciprocal of the period. Finally, the velocity of a wave is simply defined as the speed at which it travels at or in other words, the speed at which the energy is transferred from one location to another. The speed of a wave is calculated by multiplying its frequency in hertz by its wavelength in meters. Now, this should make sense to you because wavelength is the distance of one wavelength or of one cycle of the wave, and frequency is a number of wavelength, so that's the distance, per second. So the unit for frequency is hertz, or you can write this per second, and the SI unit for wavelength is meters. When you multiply frequency and wavelength together, you will get the unit of meters per second, which is for velocity. For all types of waves, the velocity of the wave depends on the medium through which it travels. And this is not just limited to mechanical waves, it also applies to electromagnetic waves, even if they don't require medium to propagate. Let's look at an example. Given that the speed of light is 3 times by 10 to the power of 8 meters per second, what is the frequency of red light that has a wavelength of 6 times 10 to the power of minus 7 meters? So as we said, the velocity of the wave is given by its frequency multiplied by its wavelength. So the frequency of this red light is given by its velocity divided by its wavelength, which is equal to 5 times by 10 to the power of 14 hertz, or you can write the unit as per second. Example 2. The oscillation of a wave over time is shown on the following graph. The speed of the wave is 450 meters per second. Now, using this graph, we have to determine the following properties, the amplitude, the period and frequency of the wave, as well as the wavelength. So the amplitude is the maximum displacement of oscillation of the wave. So this can be taken as the distance between the crest of the wave from its equilibrium position or you can measure it by measuring the distance between the trough of the wave and its equilibrium position. In both cases, you'll get the same answer. So here, this will correspond to 10 centimeters. Make sure you pay attention to the units on the y-axis. What about the period and frequency of the wave? Now, remember that we can only find this information on the graph if the x-axis is time, which it is in this case. So the period is the time taken for one wavelength of the wave to pass by. And you can see one wavelength finishes at 20 seconds. So the period is 20 seconds. The frequency can be easily calculated by taking the reciprocal of the period, so 1 over 20 seconds, which is equal to 0.05 hertz. This number means that only 0.05, or 5%, of a wave can pass by in one second. 
Now, what about the wavelength? When you're given the speed of the wave, which is 450 meters per second, and you've already found the frequency, you can use the equation of velocity equals the frequency times of the lambda to find the wavelength, which is equal to the speed of the wave divided by its frequency of 0.05 hertz. And this gives a wavelength of 9,000 meters. Hey everyone, if you found this video helpful, smash that like button and don't forget to subscribe. Want even more? Become a Patreon member for early access to videos, exclusive Discord discussions about questions on chemistry and physics, and live preparation sessions for your exams. Don't forget to head over to our website for topic tests and practice exams to further improve your understanding and learning.